Um, I'm very delighted to welcome you to the Morton, Sol Robert Solomon Morton lecture tonight. Uh, my name is Laurel Leff, and I'm chair of the Holocaust Awareness Committee at Northeastern. And there are, are many firsts for this Holocaust Awareness Week of programming. Um, for the first time that I know of, we're sponsoring an exhibit to accompany this lecture that many of you saw before this event, and I hope many more of you will see afterwards. It will hang in the lobby of International Village until February 18th, so there's lots of time to see it, and I really, it's really spectacular. It both is an important, moving story, but it's also told very well, and it also looks great in the International Village lobby, so make sure you, you get over there. Um, for the first time, we're partnering with Facing History and Ourselves, the Genocide Education and Prevention Organization, based in Brookline, but with an international National Reach and the Jewish Community Relations Council. Um, they both do great work and have been wonderful partners, uh, particularly Jeff Smith of Facing History, who which initially approached me about this partnership ab about a year ago, I think. It's taken that long to pull it all together. Um, and Judy Bond from the organization Facing History Too, who worked tirelessly to make this happen. So I am very appreciative of them. Um, it's been a great partnership. I hope we have other great partnerships in the future. Um, and for the first time, we're putting on a play. Um, Letters to Sala, written by one of tonight's panelists, and you'll hear more about it later, um, will be performed at 4 p.m. tomorrow in 909 Renaissance Park. It's going to be a reading of the play, so I encourage all of you to attend that as well. And Erica Koss, who's the Assistant Dean for Research in the College of Social Studies and Humanities, um, was the one who really made that happen. Uh, all these first-time events were added on to an always full week of programming. Um, a commemoration which took place on Monday, a film screening that was also on Monday, a survivor's talk yesterday, and of course the Morton Lecture itself. Um, Megan Brisson, the Administrative Coordinator for Northeastern's Humanities Center, always does a great job, but this year with even more moving pieces, she did an even greater great job. Um, so thank you so much, Megan, for, for all of your work on this. It really, like, it came off smoothly. Yeah, it was really great. With all of these firsts, there are many parts of Holocaust Awareness Week that remain the same. Um, the commitment of the members of the Holocaust Awareness Committee who made chairing the committee a pleasure, and how many committees can you say that about? So it's really a testament to the people who serve on the committee and how strongly they feel about these issues. Um, the university support for a week of Holocaust commemoration that no other university in the United States does year in and year out. Um, so that's very important as well. The inspiring, am I doing weird things to the screen there? Okay, I'll keep my hands over here. Um, the inspiring vision of the Jewish Studies program at Northeastern, led by my colleagues Lori Lefkowitz and Jenny Sartori. And most important, the legacy of reconciliation, friendship, and integrity left by Robert Solomon Morton and Bill Giesen. Um, Robert Morrison, Morton and Bill Giesen were both born in Germany in the early decades of the 20th century, but with very different life trajectories. Morton, who was Jewish, had to flee his homeland in 1934 and ended up as a caterer and caretaker for Harvard's Hillel, uh, University Hillel. Giesen, who is not Jewish, remained in Germany, and then, after the war, did a fellowship at MIT, followed by a long career as a chemistry professor at Northeastern. Their paths crossed at a barber shop, um, and the two became fast friends. Giesen, who dedicated his life to trying to understand the catastrophic action of the land of his birth, created this lectureship to honor his friend, Robert Morton and his family continues to support it, even though sadly, both Morton and Giesen have passed away. In recent years, members of Morton's family have also contributed to these lectures. The Robert Solomon Morton lecture is thus sponsored by the Gustel Corman Giesen Memorial Fund at Northeastern, as well as by the Robert Solomon Morton Lecture Fund. 
Um, we salute their families, their memories, and their legacies. And we are, of course, particularly happy tonight to have members of both the Morton and Giesen families here. We have Tony Morton, Mike Morton, and Barry Hayes, Evan Morton, and Nora Burns, and Mary Giesen from the Giesen family. So it's just really wonderful that you've done this year in and year out, and we, we appreciate it so much. And the reason we appreciated it so much um, is that you made this particular program possible. Um, so now I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about the program um, and then turn it over to our panelists. Um, sorrowfully, soberly, significantly, there are millions of Holocaust stories, only some of which can be told. The others have perished along with their narrators due to the ravages of the final solution or of time. That makes every Holocaust story something of a miracle, and Sala's is no exception. Sala's story is of five years as a slave laborer in seven camps where the ordinariness of some of the experiences, Sala could send and receive mail in the slave labor camp. At the beginning, she even went to the movies and home on vacation. Um, and all of that, to me at least, in reading Sala's gift and Kirshner's book about her mother's experiences, made it all seem even more diabolical, you know, the kind of the ordinariness of what was happening, at least at the beginning. The miracle doesn't end with her survival. It's also in the survival of the letters and their deliverance to the uniquely capable and loving hands, those of her daughter, Ann Kirshner, who is now Dean of the Honors College at the City University of New York. With a PhD in English from Princeton University, Anne had the scholarly inclination to place her mother's story within the broader scope of the Nazi system of slave labor. And in, in reading the book, I learned an awful lot about, about that. So it's both a personal story, an individual story, but it also has great insights into an aspect of the Nazi regime that is not as often told. Um, with a writer's eye and ear, she had the ability to turn the life and letters into literature and thus give a gift to all of us. So now I'd like to introduce Dan. Hello, Boston. <laughs> yes, oh, good, I feel much better now. Um, so um, I, am, I am so honored to be here. I'm honored that my mother's story is one of the cornerstones of Northeastern's Holocaust commemoration. Um, and I wanna start with thanks to the Northeastern team particularly to Laurel for that gracious introduction and to uh, Lori Lefkowitz, but also to the remarkable team from Facing History, especially Judy Bond and Jeff Smith, who got this all rolling uh, about a year ago. Um, I'm very grateful, too, to the Morton and Giesen family. My husband's family is actually from Giesen, Germany, so there must be some, some connection there. Um, I'm going to talk briefly before introducing the panelists, um, and we're going to leave ample time for your questions, and I hope you will have some, because that is always the most interesting part of, of the evening. As Laurel said, this is a remarkable moment. Um, it's a moment when most of the survivors are in their 80s and 90s, and so every day, um, I get a, uh, an email from someplace telling me about the passing of another survivor. It raises so many questions about how the Holocaust will be viewed, um, how it will be told, how will the next generation tell that history. We can view ourselves, it seems to me, in one of three ways. We can be bystanders to history, we can be stewards of history, or we can be active storytellers ourselves. Um, and if I have a goal, it is to make you all active storytellers, because um, as we say when we do the Passover Haggadah, we all have to feel that we came out of slavery. And one way for us to think about the, um, the future of the world as a more peaceful place is to have us all think about um, what it is we can learn from, from history. Um, my story 